So this is just the, I just have no words. I mean, I've been, so I've been playing with IBM's Circuit Composer until now for everything that I've done. It's been crazy helpful. To some extent, it seems like, it's, it honestly, to make an analogy, it's like, that's the class, the IBM Q's, calc, like the IBM Q Circuit Composer is like your classic calculator and that's like the scientific calculator. <laughs> And this is that's how I feel like when I see all the stuff in here. No, but I mean jokes aside, it feels like the IBM Q experience. Just to give you, um, just just to give you an, an uh, sort of a, a comparison, right? Let me just go go in there because it's a good tool. It's a really great tool, and it's really helped me to get where I am right now. But this is just something from another world. It feels like um, I've basically gone through the video already um i haven't checked the how to use i guess it's an extensive guide wow okay that's cool but we'll definitely go through that oh, that's just amazing i'm just saying that because look at the insights so one of the things that i always kind of complained internally sort of to myself with the ibm q experience composer is that it's pretty cool because it has really, it's a really intuitive interface. What I really like about this is the fact that you can see as you build, you can see different visualizations and what's happening, right? So you add a hardware here, you add a hardware here, and kind of you see your states and everything. And then you can also see the density matrix, which I already explained in some videos that it is really useful. Um, because you can, with the density matrix, you can kind of see the state of your subsystems. Uh, but it felt cumbersome to use here because really you can't do anything aside from, you can see the values actually, if you go here in each of those squares, but you can't really calculate easily. It's it's the density matrix of your whole system. You can't define registers, you can't define like subsystems. And, and, and so it kind of, it's not useful 100%. Um, and then you can, you know, another useful thing here is you can, um, as you as you build, you can definitely you can touch the chasm code here, and then you can quickly modify your circuit. Which I'll, at least it's a way that I used to work uh, work around some limitations of this editor when I was like, I don't know, I'm just putting random stuff in here, and I was like, oh, I what is the okay so what is the current if i now would like to know because now i know here in the visualization what's my current uh, state vector and by the way i cannot fully i see i see what the uh i see i cannot you know you see the color coding which is sort of the face but you don't really see the value right and and you don't see in 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 a in proportion to like a 360 degrees rotation you don't see how much this is unless you know you kind of know that that's zero degrees you know that that's like 180 degrees um or like that's half the way so to say right but you don't really and then if you say now i want to know what's my state here uh, i first originally thought you can put a barrier and that helps you do that um but I don't think so. I don't think so. No, no, no. So you kind of got to do this. And then the way that I used to work around that is because you can quickly do that. So you can just, you know, quickly delete that and then take a look at this and then go back and then copy paste again. But basically it's kind of cumbersome to analyze a big circuit because you, you, you cannot see the steps in between while but it's kind of intuitive enough for learning really at the size of you don't go up more than like two, three qubits. And then you're kind of learning the basics, even like it helped me understand the quantum Fourier transform. It helped me understand a lot of the stuff, but here with this stuff. Um, so with Quirk, the thing is, um, and I've been playing a little bit here already, but it's like, I think the biggest advantage and I, pro I will probably do a full review or a full comparison between this tool and the IBM Q experience. And there's another tool that I've been playing around, which is QPS, um, the Quantum Programming Studio, uh, which is also a good one um, because it has a, uh, it also has a, a cool community section where you, or discover, you can actually see projects from other people. So you can see people that like, I don't know, 
to beat quantum other right and then you, you click here and actually you can see the circuit it can cl you can fork it you can do a bunch of stuff you can also i if i remember well exactly you can also just it, it gets automatically translated into like all those different languages um which is honestly pretty cool so for example you can go to Keyscape, and then what if I do that? Does this work this way? Yeah, so you get a Keyscape code for that. That's pretty cool. So, and I'll probably do a full comparison, you know, sort of, I'll try to do, and then try to see the pros and cons of each of the tools. But this feels like once you, once you get um, sort of, you know, the basic intuition level that is definitely the tool to go for, at least that's what I feel. Um, I'll definitely explore that because, and, uh, there's just a lot of stuff in here. What I like a lot is this yellow things in here, for example. That's pretty cool because it's a sort of an animated, it's a dynamic gate. I don't know if those are really something you can implement in a quantum computer, but it's maybe just for you to understand the evolution of the circuit. Um, it's kind of cool because, for example, it's like a like a spinning so you, you for, let's say let's put an X gate here, for example, and let's maybe I like to get rid of those kind of tutorial things every time that I start, but maybe there's a way to do that. And now I do these and, and you kind of, you see it's animated. So you kind of see, first of all, you see block spheres for each of the qubit. That's really cool. You see sort of the amplitudes and the phases with the circle notation, which is the same notation that is used by the uh, O'Reilly book, which is really interesting. But you see everything. Look, you see the value, you see the complex part, you see the phase. The amount of detail is awesome. Like it allows you to do a lot of debugging, also, I guess. Um, because if I would, if I would just kind of load a load a complex circuit, I'm just gonna like randomly choose. I'm, I'm just gonna randomly choose something like that. I don't know. Uh, or maybe the quantum Fourier transform. Let's go for this, right? So you can see this is animated. Um, but I guess I can re I can get rid of these for now, and and then kind of you know you can make up whatever input in here. So that was just a way to kind of see all the inputs. But what you can do is you can sample at any point, or that's what's more, you can get a density matrix that is partial. That is just awesome. So you you kind of can resize it and say, look, I just want to take a look at the density matrix from that subsystem which is something you cannot do with the IBM Q experience because you just get the get the density matrix from everything. Um, it feels kind of, it's beautiful, it's really nice, but it's that, that's kind of way more detailed. And, and so that's, you know, it's just, uh, and then you can take a look at the amplitudes as well from your, just the subsystem. I, I got to really, I got to really work through that because I don't know how that works at all like what the fixed means here. This is just, there's so much in here to explore. Um, so one thing that I'll definitely do with this tool is I'll go through each of the example circuits, definitely. I mean, we've done some of those in the channel, but I, like Grow Research, for example. Um, pretty interesting. I don't know, I, I, think, I think there's just a lot to play with in here. And well, yeah, you can just share it. Look at this. It's, you can just share it. I mean, you cannot see that because I cut it in the edit of the video, but you, it's everything encoded in the URL. So you can share the URL and then it just directly uh, renders the circuit for you. You can also export it. It's pretty awesome. That's nice. Oh, and there's an offline copy. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. What does this do if I open it? <laughs> Nice. And it still works. Oh, that's just amazing. Gotta check out that works. Yeah, that's oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. So <clears throat> what I mean is I think I think this is awesome. Like definitely we'll work we'll go through the examples and it will see see what can we do because there's a lot of stuff in the toolboxes. I don't even know where to start. I feel like I'm in a candy shop really like eight turns. The one thing that I see kind of that I've seen, cause I've been just taking a roughly look at it is there's a difference here. I'm kind of, I don't, I don't know how to do parametrized rotations. So I know there's this parametrized rotations here, but I think they are implemented in a way that they're just, 
really specific to a particular use case. Because in IBM, you can do like literally Z rotations, and then you can just specify the angle, right? Um, whereas here, it seems like the parametrized rotations are parametrized based on an input A, which is then it's A divided by 2 to the power of N, with N being the number of qubits in input A. So basically, what this means is that if you have, uh, if you have say, for example, a uh, nothing gate. What is this? <laughs> Silly stuff. Um, say that you so say that this is input A, right? So it's zero or it's like one zero one, and now you add a rotation. Right. So what this rotation is oh, that's cool. So this input is then here you see two to the power of three, because here we have three qubits basically. So what this is doing is it's saying it's, you're parametrizing it in uh, relation to the maximum number you can represent with three qubits. In this case, it's an eight. So if I would put an eight, so this means I would just put um, x, 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 right? Phase is zero. No, that's seven, sorry. I would get rid of this. Maybe, yeah, maybe this needs to be this way. I don't know how it works, but I have the impression this is what it's this is what it's doing. It's kind of rotating the face. You see the face is is different. So if I put here a uh, block amplitudes, not sample, but uh, just here. Oh, sorry, it has to be in the, in the oh, I don't know, actually. No, 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 sorry, this has to be in hardware, exactly. What am I doing? I don't know. I don't know what am I doing. But anyway, so it seems like you got to encode this within the circuit to parametrize those gates. It's a bit more complicated, but I think there is a reason for that, which is kind of, um, yeah. That's definitely crazy. The, the one disadvantage I see is maybe it's going to be difficult to then kind of get that implemented into um, into circ or into Qiskid or something else that you can actually run on a quantum computer. But in terms of designing an algorithm, I think that tool is just awesome. It's way more powerful, way, way more powerful than everything else that I've seen so far. Uh, but again, it's just a tool, right? But it's, it's, it's definitely something that I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get, I wanna get um, my hands dirty on this because I think that's definitely gonna help me in my journey uh, farther to kind of investigate more and kind of you know, it's like when you're gonna build something or try to understand a circuit, you can basically debug step by step kind of because you can add the displays in the middle. So say if we're just now doing other stuff like that, that's pretty cool. That's really, that's really cool. You can always like sample in the middle. What does it do? Sampling. Density with no chance. You see, that's just nice. So it tells you. I don't know what the log is here. But it's just, 
and um, a shout out to Craig for for having built that. So this tool has been built by Craig Kidney. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, this is the this is the block. It's just um, this just this is. I'm gonna spend a lot of time in here, <laughs> definitely. Well, yeah, you can make gates, and it's pretty cool because you can actually directly put a matrix, which is awesome. Because in some papers, what I was doing is like it was, you know, you know, we have like a gate, and I have to implement the Hamiltonian, whatever. And it's like, yeah, how how am I gonna do that with the IBM Q experience? I mean, you can do that because in with the IBM Q experience, you can implement some general gate with this U3 basically by giving it certain parameters, but it's a bit more of a black box and he's more, he's easy. He is just like, just give you the matrix, but you can also have a circuit and then, and then this just stays here. Look, it's just here. It's nice. And it's also, you know, you can just share that and you, you can, yeah, it's pretty nice. That's definitely, that's definitely, um, I'm definitely going to spend some time in here in the next in the next weeks, and I'll I'll probably do a as I kind of learn the tool, which I'm going to record, because I definitely want to go through the different different uh, example circuits in here. Um, then we'll probably learn to use the tool a lot. But I see here quarter turns, eighth turns, sixteen turns. Those are like standard standard gate model stuff. Yeah, pretty cool. Nice.